How about now, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yay. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. Hello, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. We're starting week eight. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun, right? Hopefully, you guys are having fun. <laughs> um, we are starting week eight. This week, we're going to conclude the second unit of this class, listening and speaking. This week, we're going to be spending some time probably in class, some cl time in class and, and maybe some time outside of class working to finish our second performance task. Today, we're going to talk in greater detail about what to include in our second performance task that includes three of the themes, three of the topics that are part of uh, the second unit. We'll talk about that later today. We have a song for today. Let me share my screen. From none other than the king of pop, Mr. Michael Jackson. Let me open up here. And this was recommended by Sigrid. I don't know, Sigrid, are you here today? Yes, it's here. Ah, okay. Uh, can you tell us something about this song? Does it have a particular meaning for you personally? Does it uh, remind you maybe of a past experience? Uh, anything you want to say about uh, this song? Um, I really like Michael Jackson songs because... Many of them have very nice messages. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, does it, um, have you always listened to Michael Jackson or how, how, how often have you listened to him in, in your past? Can you maybe even, does it make you think of maybe a, a, an experience that you've had or, or do you listen to Michael Jackson under certain, uh, situations or context? No, I like to hear his songs because he's my favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's listen to the song. And before I do that, I'm going to share. If you guys go into files in Microsoft Teams under music, I moved our top 40-ish list there, okay? So if you can't find it, it's because I moved it into a folder called Music. And in the same folder, I also created a second Excel spreadsheet that is called Lyrics and Meaning. And if you open up this Excel spreadsheet, we have the lyrics <clears throat> to the song as well. <clears throat> and... We're going to listen to the song first, but I would like for you guys to choose one line. Choose one line here by putting your name in the C column. And in this, when you choose this line, just one line from the, the song, I would like for you to choose a lyric that is a figurative that uses figurative language, right? So here you can put the meaning of what this line means. But try to choose a lyric that has figurative language that's not literal. Maybe it's a metaphor. Maybe it's a simile. Maybe it's personification. It's, it's a figurative use of the language. It could be a phrasal verb, okay, that we've talked about. So try to choose one line and try to choose different lines because some of the lines are repeated. Try to choose a different line from what maybe someone else has chosen unless you're talking about a different meaning or offering a different explanation to the meaning. But let's listen to the song first. Go ahead and open up this file if you can as you're listening to, uh, to the song. And then we'll come back to the spreadsheet after we, after we hear the song. All right, so let's see if I can get this going here.
It's a really good song. It's got a, real, a lot of great examples of figurative language, phrasal verbs, idiomatic expressions. Go ahead and choose a line. Choose one that st- that uh, speaks to you, that stands out to you, that maybe you particularly like. Maybe you have a question about the meaning. So choose a line that has figurative language. Try to choose a line that someone else has not already chosen. We could spend easily all day on all of these, all of the lyrics to the song because it is rather long. But especially at the end, they have a lot of good examples of figurative language in the coda in row 100 where it says, keep the faith and below. This is, um, there's a lot of good examples here of figurative language. Anybody want to jump in and talk about their line? Talk about the, you can share the lyric and then uh, the meaning that it has for you. Some of the meanings that uh, we share today are going to be personal. They're going to be specific, right? It could mean some uh, something different depending on on your own personal experience. Anybody want to jump in? Teacher. Yes. I choose um, because you can climb the highest mountain. It's the number 10. Okay. The number 10. All right. So, all right, Paulina, what do you, what do you want to share with us about this line? Well, can I just say like what I think it means? Sure. I think that it means that like you can do whatever you want if you like mm, I don't know how to say the word. <laughs> uh what's the uh, what's the word in Spanish? Mm, si eres persistente. Okay, so if you're persistent, it's almost the same word in English, persistent. Yeah. Right. Persistent? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I think about the the that the line, mm-hmm. the line, yeah, yeah. And what do you think, Paulina, about the highest mountain? What what does that mean specifically for you? Mm, like the most important, like gold that you have. All right. And. What about the highest mountain? Like, can you say any more about that? Because there are a lot of mountains, right? Figuratively mm-hmm. speaking, right? This is a, we're not talking literal mountains here. We're not talking literally about physical mountains. We're actually talking, it's a metaphor for your goals, right? But it's not just your goals. It's actually your the highest goals, the highest mountains, the, the probably the, the thing that, most people would think is not possible, right? So in your line, Paulina, go ahead and write out what literally, what you think that might mean based on what you just told us, right? And that's a very good interpretation. Write out what you think literally that might mean. Okay. Great, thank you, Paulina. Anyone else want to share your line, the line itself and its meaning for you? I say good. Do you want to share your line? Line 42, just keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, yes. Well, for me, it means that we have to focus on the goal that we want to achieve, no matter what. Yeah, and this line really, I think, speaks to uh, what Paulina was saying about, especially using the word persistent, being persistent. Mm-hmm. Showing dedication, we could say that, right? Are you dedicated to learning English and developing all of your skills? Are you dedicated and are you going to be persistent in wanting to be a translator, right? If that's what you want uh, professionally, if if that's your professional goals, 
right? Whatever your professional goals are, are you going to be persistent? Are you going to show dedication? Great. Yes. Fernanda, would you like to share yours? Line 24, but you got to keep the faith. Yes, teacher. Uh, well, I think that this phrase is like very simple to know what it means. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, like it says uh, there, uh, if you, well, you can do anything, but uh, if you can, if you have the idea that you can do it, and well, you can do it because you are saying like no no i can do it so the possibility of doing that it's like um is i no sé pero como que se va restando pues mm -hmm. como que tú te saboteas no sé mm -hmm. and uh, well uh, if you trust yourself everything is possible i think that uh like you said before, if you are pers persistent, <laughs> mm -hmm. persistent, you can, yes, you can get anything you want. I think it means that phrase. Yeah, I think uh, the most important part of what you wrote for me is when you say trust yourself, right? Trust yourself; everything is possible, right? I really think what you write there gets to the true meaning of keeping the faith when it comes to trying to achieve what you want to achieve, right? Very good. Thank you, Fernanda. Carlos, line 23, you can be a winner. Okay, so I wrote, if you do the things with dedication, love, and a lot of patience, you can have good results. Uh, I think that everyone can be a winner, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we win or lose, but I think the the most important thing is to learn about the errors and don't do those and don't do those errors one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you really nail it here when you say dedication. You have love for what you want to do, and you have patience. That's so important. You know, when you guys are developing your English skills, right, is you need to have patience with yourself. Not that you become what's called complacent. Not that you just say, oh, okay, I, I'm just going to stay the way I am. But you continue to work and improve and try to learn as much as you can. But you also have patience and maybe even become comfortable with the process, the process of learning, especially English, it's hard. It's really hard to learn another language. And so you need to have, first of all, a desire, a love for it, or at least an appreciation. And you need to have patience. You need to say, okay, right now I see that I need to improve. I'm going to keep trying, but I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue working hard learning and asking questions, working with my classmates, working with my teachers, and so on. I agree with you, Carlos. Everyone can be a winner. For you, all of you, define what a winner is. That's going to be really important, right? It can be in your grammar class. What does winning mean uh, in your grammar class? What does winning mean in this class, listening and speaking? What does winning mean in general, being a student at the university, right? What's a win winner mean in terms of becoming a good teacher? So it's really important. I think that's a, a, a good way to think about, first of all, how do you define winning so that you know what to work for? All right, Carlos, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share your lines? Diana, line 52, don't let them get in your way. Yes, for me, that means that you don't have to let anyone affect the goals you want to meet. Absolutely. I think of the word interfere. Don't let anyone interfere 
with your goals. Don't let anyone create obstacles for you to get to reach your goals. Don't let anyone talk you out of yes. achieving your goals. Very good point, Diana. Thank you. So some key words there, interfere. Don't let anyone interfere with your goals. Don't let anyone uh, get in your way, right, which is from the lyric. But don't let anyone interfere. Don't let anyone create obstacles. Don't let anyone talk you out of your goals. If it's something that you really want, you need to work for it. You need to work hard for it and be persistent. Sus uh, Susie, would you like to share line 53? You can be a winner. Yes, sure. Um, if everything you want, like rope here. All right. Is there an, a specific example, or it can be something related to developing or learning English, or it could be something else, maybe something from your past experience. But is there something in your past that you can share where you can uh, talk about an example, maybe, of being a winner? Mm, yes. Uh, as you said, uh, my learning English could be an example because um, I think that now... My, well, at the beginning, my level was uh, right, but I uh, feel that now it is um, even more um, good. But uh, at the end, I know that I'm going to be a winner because I'm going to improve it uh, to necessary to be a good teacher. I think one of the yeah, I think one of the things that I want you guys to be careful with, right, with this idea of quote, being a winner. It's it's going to be so important how you define what it means to be a winner. So, for example, if I say, or if you say, okay, I'll be a quote-unquote winner. I will win if I achieve 500 on the listening section of the TOEFL. All right? So maybe that is a goal for you. Maybe that is something that you're going to think, okay, if I achieve 500 points, I will be a winner. But maybe in the short term, right, maybe in the short term, your to be a winner might be something simpler. Maybe it's going to be something uh, maybe of a lower level. Maybe for right now, uh, being a winner would be just improving gradually your points, your score over time, right? So, it's going to be really important how you define for you both in the short term and in the long term what it means to be a winner. Because sometimes if we define being, being a winner, uh, maybe that's not realistic or just beyond our, our reach, it could actually demotivate us. It could actually make us feel more stressed Right, because we think, well, I should have already the 500 points on the TOEFL win. Well, no, not really, right? Because we just started Prope One. We're going to have one year to maybe reach that goal of of uh, uh, of achieving a 500 points on the t on the uh, TOEFL. So maybe my goal is not 500 right now. Maybe my goal is going to be, I don't know, 400, right, or 380, or whatever whatever it is, right? Whatever my current score is, maybe a little bit higher where I'm showing improvement. So be really careful how you define what a winner is for you in your own particular context and do not compare yourself with your classmates, right? I mean, don't compete, right? Don't think, well, I should be at this level because other, my classmates might be at a different level or, or whatever, Okay, so be careful with how you define what it means to be a winner. Yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Susie. Uh, Monica, well. would you like to share your thoughts? Line 90, because it's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I think the good or bad situations 
Sorry, Monica, sorry to interrupt. Can you maybe speak a little bit closer to the mic or a little bit louder? Okay. You can hear me? Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think it's focus on the good or bad situation that you need to face and can only get better with time. Uh, I think there are a lot of situations that we can control or we only improve step by step. Um, it's like the translation for es cuestión de tiempo mm -hmm. in español. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's what I think. Yeah, it's a question of time. It's a question of time. This is this relates a lot to the word patience and persistence, right? Being patient. And this is what's difficult when it comes to learning a language because learning a language is not incremental. What I mean by that is it's not like, okay, I, I know five words tomorrow I'm going to... I'm going to know seven words. The next day, I'm going to know nine words and be able to use them. It, it's not always linear, right? It's not always a continuously gradual process. It goes in phases. Sometimes, maybe you felt like this. You're like, wow, I've been studying and I'm not showing any improvement. I don't feel like I'm improving. I feel like maybe sometimes I'm even worse in certain areas of my English development, right? And you get frustrated. But this is, is exactly the normal process of learning is if you continue to practice and learn and you're, 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 can, you continue to make an effort, what happens is one day you're going to wake up and you're going to do something and you're going to realize that you just did something that you couldn't do a month ago. And it's, it's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to be a surprise. All right? And so what I would ask each of you is to, to look for those things, right? But not get frustrated if it doesn't happen one day to the next or one week to the next. Sometimes it can take months. But, that is, but the key is to continue to learn and practice and not get frustrated and accept the process as long as you keep working the whole the whole idea here is that you're that you continue to work and learn and read and listen and and practice and and not be afraid of making mistakes and you continue to make an effort if you do that the learning comes it will it'll happen right but it's not always gradual and it's not always apparent or obvious again day to day or week to week very good. Thank you, Monica, for sharing. Violetta, line 98, you can make it happen. Would you like to share? Violetta, I'm not sure if she can hear us right now. Let's look at one more line. Anybody else want to share? Ah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, my line is, you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I put that you can do everything. And if you, ah, uh, yeah. You can do everything if you want. And only you can make your goals and your dreams and nobody else because i think that all that we want um we can make true just just we need to be clear in what we want and it's all yeah this kind of relates to what we spoke earlier about not letting other people talk you out of things, not letting other people dissuade you or say that you can't do something. If it's something that you really want to do, then you pursue it, that you do it, that you figure out a way, you figure out a strategy, you figure out 
who you need to be in contact with. You need to know where to go, with whom to go, what you need to do to achieve your goals and be really systematic about it. Be very deliberate. Be very intentional about what it is that you want to do. Right? Even just talking about developing your English skills, each one of you are going to have a lot of different ways that you go about it, depending on your level, depending on your preferences, depending on your past experiences, etc. All right, this is a great song, guys. Thanks for sharing, and make sure that you post, uh, choose one of these lines. Try to choose a line that has some figurative language in it, and then try to offer a, a specific literal translation under the B column. This is an exercise of in trying to find good examples of figurative language and then being able to reword that idea literally, right? Being able to paraphrase that idea and again, a lot of these uh, meanings, some will be very similar. We'll share uh, interpretations. In some cases, we won't share interpretations, right? And that's really the beauty of using figurative language is a lot of times good figurative language can have different meanings for different people. All right, guys. Uh, the last thing, just so you notice, I put in here the verse. I labeled the verse, first verse. Second verse, the chorus, and the bridge. These are common sections of especially pop songs. And I listed that here as well. Sometimes they refer to these as A, B, like this is a common song pattern. A, B, A, B, right? With the, the bridge would be the C section. Okay. All right. So, very good, guys. Um, let's go ahead and close this. If you haven't had a chance to add your meaning, you can do so later. Um, what I'd like to do now is I would like for us to review our speaking activity that we did last Friday. And so, if you have the rubric on your computer... I'm going to pull it up here on my screen. Take a quick look again. This is the rubric that I shared with everyone before the speaking activity so that you knew more or less what, what to expect, what, to, what I was looking for in your responses. Today I want to do a self-evaluation. That is, I want to ask you to evaluate your own performance from last Friday's speaking activity based on this rubric. So what I'm going to do here is I have an online questionnaire and I'm going to share the link to the questionnaire in the chat. So give me just one moment. All right, I'm going to share the link in the chat. And I'll give you guys a few minutes here to complete the online self-evaluation for the speaking activity, and then we'll take a look at the results. All right, so go ahead and click on the link. I'll give you a few minutes. It's 8.38. It should take, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, 38, 48. We'll come back about 8.40. 40, I think that should be enough time to complete it. 840, not 840. How about 850? Uh, okay, we'll come back at 850 and we'll look at the results. Um, most of these are closed questions. There are a few open questions. Okay, so I want to give you plenty of time to offer a good response. So we'll come back at 850 and go ahead and access the link. If for some reason you're not able to access the link, of course, let me know. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. We'll come back at 8.50. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. Uh, I've also included the 
video, the link to the video from Friday's class. And you'll notice that your name under the description, you can find the timestamp where you can go right to your, your response. So at the very top, it says question to answer. That's, that's, this is the question that I posed, right? And you can just click on, again, the timestamps for your, each of your responses. So you can jump right to your response and to help you evaluate your performance. All right, so we're going to come back at 9 o'clock. I'll give you a few more minutes so that you can listen to your response again. And, uh, and then you can fill out the, the self-evaluation. All right, guys? So, again, click the link there and uh, use those timestamps. That'll save you some time to find exact jump right to your response uh, from the question that I pose at 9 minutes and 18 seconds there, if you can see, see that. Okay? All right, guys. Let's listen to the question once again, and then we'll look at the responses, and we'll talk about how to perhaps, um, you know, what to think about when responding to a question like this. All right, so let's listen again to the question. Some people enjoy taking risks and trying new things. Others are not adventurous. They are cautious and prefer to avoid danger. Which behavior do you think is better? Explain why. All right. Which behavior do you think is better and explain why? Now, let's take a look at some of the results and we'll come back to the question here after we look at some of the results. All right, so it looks like many of you thought that, or many of you actually responded only using the first person. Some used a combination, some used a second person, third person. When asked about which you, should you use, most of you answered the first person only, and some of you mentioned some sort of combination. All right, so if we look back at the question, right, what kind of behavior, right, explain why, which behavior is best, and explain why, right, you're probably going to have a combination. You certainly could have a combination of first, second, and or third person, but you're probably going to include at least some of the first person. Because the question is, what do you think, right? The question is, what do you think? So you're going to respond, well, you know, and you don't even have to say, I think, right? But you, you'll answer, I. Or you could say, you could say, well, people that have this type of behavior, you could start in the third person. But it's always good, I think, to include a personal story when asked about what you think about a particular topic. All right, so let's look at question number three. Here are some of the most recent or the latest responses. I won't show you all so that we won't know who answered what, um, but we already know who answered what if we listen to all of the recordings. All right, but here are certain some of the latest responses. All right, when asked why. All right, so whenever you ha are posed with a question, all right, which one do you think is best and then why? The main part of the answer is the why. That's the, 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 the heart of the answer is uh, you providing reasons behind to justify your answer. All right, so make sure that when, you're, when you have a question like that, not to ignore, in this case, the why aspect of your response. Okay, here are from our 29 responses so far, it looks like here is our average grade that you would evaluate your own performance. Justify your grade, all right, so some of you, well, I'll look a little bit more about at that, but here are some of the responses to justifying 
your, your grade. And then the last three questions relate to taking notes. And looking at this, 20 of you answered, yes, you did take notes. Nine of you did not. The seventh question, question number seven, did the notes help provide a better response? Most of you said yes. Okay, here are the responses for those. Which responses? Which response below best indicates your views about taking notes? Most of you answered that your notes were sufficient. Okay. So one of the reasons why I wanted you to self-evaluate, all right, is for you, first of all, to see whether or not you answered why. Did you think you answered why? And do you think you answered um, enough? Did you answer long enough? You were given one minute to respond. And I calculated the time that you spent answering the question, I would ask that you do the same. I would ask that you go back and time yourself and just see out of one minute, how many, basically how many seconds did you speak? All right. And we're going to do this again on Friday. I'm going to give you a grade that I, I, I think uh, that you deserve based on your response. But the, this is going to be a practice run. I want you to compare the grade that I'm going to give you with what you think you deserve based on this questionnaire. One of the things I'm checking is how long you respond. All right, so on Friday, we're going to have another speaking activity very similar to this. I'll give you a question. You'll have a minute to respond. But pay close attention to the question and make sure that you have enough, that you spoke enough. All right. If you only spoke for 30 seconds and you didn't take notes, or maybe you did take notes, but you still only spoke for 30 seconds, then I want you to pay close attention to the way in which you're taking notes. Maybe you need to write out more ideas that you can speak about when giving your answer. If you're given an answer, if you're given a question something like this, like which behavior do you think is best and then why, then you want to choose one or the other. If if the question is which one is best, my suggestion to you would be to choose one or the other. The reason I say that is because, first of all, of course, you know, there are maybe there are times where uh, one behavior is more, uh, you know, is more prevalent, more obvious, or maybe you agree more on one type of behavior than the other, depending on the situation. If you try to talk about both, it's, it's, you're, it's more difficult for one. And, you only have one minute to, to speak. I would rather you choose one or the other because the question is, which one is best? Which, which one would you prefer? So choose one. And then from that one, from that decision, choose however many reasons or ways to support your answer. And that's what you can include in your notes. Right? So you can list out more options in your notes that you can talk about when you give a response. All right, so I'm going to provide some feedback. I'll let you get not guys know what I would give you, uh, what score I would give you on, on, on a scale from 1 to 10. I want you to compare what I give you, the feedback that I provide you, with what you did. And on Friday, we'll do another speaking activity, and you'll receive a grade for that activity. So you will not receive a grade for this activity that you did on Friday. I want to uh, use this as kind of a, uh, as a practice. And, and I really want you to pay close attention to whether or not you need to take notes. If you do need to take notes, are you happy with the way in which you took notes in order to present the best response? 
This is all to help you presenting a good response. I'm not going to check to see if you took notes or not. This is all about what you need to do or not to do in order to perform better for this activity. All right, so on Friday, we'll do the same thing again, exactly the same pretty much, except we'll do a different question, of course. We'll start right at 8 o'clock. Um, but really pay close attention to your note-taking and really listen carefully to the question. If they, ans- if they ask a question about why, right, choose reasons, right? If they may ask you, well, how would you do this? Then they're looking for ways. How would you do this? Well, then in your notes, say, okay, this is one way, and this is another way, and this is another way. And you don't have to write out a lot of text, but you're writing out ideas, enough ideas that you feel that you can speak in total, right, closer to one minute. The the response on Friday, you should speak at least 50 seconds, at least, right? And... Although I would like for you to conclude your response within one minute, it's certainly better to run over (laughs) to keep speaking and then I interrupt you than to speak for 30 seconds, right? So we want you to use up the allotted time, in this case one minute, as much as possible. All right, so on Friday, guys, we'll redo the speaking activity, and if you haven't responded yet it looks like a few of you four or five of you still have not responded i would highly recommend that you complete this self-evaluation right this is for your purposes because again i want you to compare your own self-evaluation with my feedback that i'm going to provide you later today all right my friends Let me open up Microsoft Teams. For the rest of the class today, I'd like for us to begin thinking about our second performance task for Unit 2. And in Unit 2, let me grab syllabus here. For Unit 2, for this performance task, I'd like for us to focus on... Style and Celebrities, Holidays and Traditions, and Food. So I want us to find a way in this performance test to bring these three topics together, thinking about key vocabulary words also that relate to this performance. If you go into Microsoft Teams under Files, under Performance Tasks, Unit 2, we have a Word document that I would like for you to open up. Okay, so if we, let's go into this document. I'll give you a second to join this shared Word online document. This is the same document that we worked on when we divided up into our sections. Okay, so all of you, hopefully all of you have added your name and your team under one of these three topics. Fashion and famous celebrities, traditions and holidays, and recipes, food, and culture. I'll give you a second to join this document. I see Nelly has joined. I'll give you guys a few seconds here to join this Word document. All of you should be able to find it. It's under Files, under the General Channel in Microsoft Teams, under Performance Tasks, under a folder called Unit 2 Performance Task, and then the the document is called A Good Performance. This is the Word document.
All right, so today I wanted us to put some ideas together about what a good performance is going to be for this for this particular task. Now, for us to do this, there are a couple of things that I'm going to ask that you include. All right, so under the title, What Makes a Good Performance? All right, what I would like for us to think about, I want us to use a sway. All right, so all of you uh, used a sway for your last task last week, an activity that we did. So I think most of us now are somewhat familiar with the sway. I think it's fairly user-friendly. We want to use a sway for this performance task. And I want this all to think about doing a cooking show. A cooking show is going to be the context for this performance. All right, so a sway and a cooking show. Now... You'll notice here below, a great performance includes, if you see this subheading, a great performance includes. I want to hear from each one of you, and I'm going to create a, a numbering points here, okay? And I would like for you to think about your specific topic, your topic maybe you're going to focus on famous celebrities maybe you're going to focus on fashion maybe you're going to focus on holidays or traditions maybe you're going to focus on recipes or culture this is just a brainstorming all right so it, don't worry about you know what you discussed specifically in your team this is just a brainstorming activity right so you can change your mind after class it doesn't matter but for right now, what I would like all of you to do is to create a list of specific things about your performance, specific things that relate to your topic, right, that you're going to talk about, that you could talk about, okay, that you could talk about, and list it out. List one thing. I'd like each of you We've got, I think, 34, at least we had 34 of you online. Looks like we have, how many do we have? We have 40. Great. We have 40 of you online right now, so we should have 40 <clears throat> specific aspects of your performance that you might include. Again, we're just brainstorming. Don't worry about, you know, being committed to talking about the specific topic that you have. But I want you to add very specific aspects. So if you're going to talk about food, maybe talk about a type of food. If you're going to talk about um, a traditional dish here uh, in Mexico, name the dish. And name, if instead of just saying images, what kind of images from that type of food would you include? Be specific. The key here is being very specific, right? Instead of saying a clear message, what message would it be? Instead of saying images, explain what kinds of images would it be? Instead of saying clear and complete information, what information are you referring to? Again, use your headings, your topics as a guide. All of you should appear under one of these three topics, right? Fashion, maybe you're going to talk about fashion, right? And you're probably not going to talk about fashion and famous celebrities. Maybe you just talk about fashion or maybe you just talk about celebrities. So talk about a specific aspect of your performance that relates to famous celebrities that you could include in your performance. Instead of saying videos in English, Talk about specific videos, about what topic, from whom, right? Maybe you have a specific person that produces a certain uh, video, but remember that you're going to create a video, so we're probably not going to include other videos. You are going to produce your own video, 
where you might have images. Um, you're, of course, you know, you probably want to show your face. That would be nice. It's always best in these video performances to show your face. It just adds another dynamic and it adds more interest to the video if we're able to see your, your faces during the video. So try to think of a celebrity. Again, this is not a commitment. You can change your mind. But when you say about a, a celebrity, choose a celebrity. Choose a celebrity. Remember, your overall performance is going to bring together fashion and celebrities. It's going to bring together fashion and celebrities with holidays and traditions and food. Teacher, we have to record. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? We have, we have, do we have to record the call or no? Do you have to record the, I didn't get that, the last word. Do we have to record the call or not? For the video, for this performance task? Yeah. You you can. It's up to you how you want to create the video. It's up to you. All right? Uh, if you want to create, uh, create a call and record that session just as you've done in the past and that works, then that's fine. You can do that to create the video. Um, but there, there are many other ways. I mean, um, you know, you can, you can do it individually and bring it together as long as it feels like it's coherent, right? That the whole video uh, performance relates to these three topics. You can do it individually and then submit them. So again, guys, what I'm asking for here in the list, all right? So instead of saying complete ideas about holidays, choose a holiday. Now, I know, I know that maybe you're still thinking about holidays, but just as an example, like what kind, what, what does it mean, like complete ideas? Complete ideas about in what sense? I right? try to be specific instead of saying complete information or complete ideas. What does it mean? What do you mean by that? And just find an example. Again, if you change your mind, if tomorrow you're talking with your teammates or even later today, you change your mind, that's fine. This is just to brainstorm and get an idea of what to include. I would also ask that at the end of your line that you put in your put your first name in parentheses just so that I can see who's responding here. So please add your name at the end of the line. I'm going to add uh, some other lines here just to put all the numbers and you guys can just add your examples here. Should have about 40, 41 of us here. <clears throat> okay, so we need everyone, a response from everyone. Please make sure to include your name as Susie has done at the end of hers. And in your case, Susie, try to think about what it means. What do you mean by complete information? And think about your topic. Think about the category here as an example. 
what would it mean to offer complete information about the topic that you could include in your video? Okay, if you want to share. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about food, right? Um, okay, so notice here we have three topics, three general categories, okay? So each team, as a, as a whole team, you're going to talk about three different categories. You're going to talk about, number one, fashion and famous celebrities, number two, traditions and holidays, and number three, recipes, food, and culture as a team. Um, but, indivi example. but individually... Right, you're going to choose one of these topics based on the list that you provided last week. All right, so for example, uh, Erica is going to talk about either fashion or famous celebrities. She can choose to talk about one of those, or she could choose to talk about both of those together. But she's only going to talk about fashion and celebrities. She's in Team 9. Team 9, Monica... She's uh, going to work with Erica, but she's going to talk specifically about traditions or holidays or combine those two together, right? And let's see, did I miss? And Team 9 and then Sigrid, she's going to work with Monica and Erica. She's going to talk about food or recipes or, or culture, some combination of those of those topics, but Team Nine is gonna uh, is gonna cover those three topics. Um, like in here, in a great performance includes. Mm -hmm. I have to put like the specific topic that I choose. That's like, correct. For example, I choose about the recipes. Okay. Like for example, I can put like images of tamales, mole, and that stuff. Yeah, so so what would you what would it be um what would be a good performance for you and presenting mole, the recipe for mole. So you mentioned images. What else would you include? What would be a good performance? What would be a good thing to include about making mole besides images? What else? What do you think? And I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't see who was speaking just now. But what else would you include? Could you include in a in a recipe for making mole? What do you think? Uh, Jazz, could you include what sources would you use? Go ahead and be specific. And this is about the performance itself, like the end performance. So think about not so much the process of a good performance, which is certainly important. What I'm curious about here is a great performance, that is when you finish with your video, what specifically would be a good thing to include, to say, okay, this is a good video. Why is it good? Well, because I include this, this, and this. That relates to my topic. So, uh, Jazz, if you could think about that, see if you can provide an example of your topic, your chosen topic, and maybe two or three elements that you, specific elements that you can include in that performance. Teacher. Yes. Um, my internet just gone. So I'm going. I'm going to disconnect the call. Okay. Okay. No problem. I'm just uh, avisando. Okay. Yeah. No problem, guys. If you guys ever have problems with uh, the internet connection and you just need to leave and come back, that's fine. That's no no problem. Uh, okay. Sigrid, organized ideas. All right, so tell me, uh, how would you organize? Which ideas are you thinking about? And what would be the organization for those ideas? All right, again, okay. 
it, 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 you can change your mind. If tomorrow you say, no, no, I'm going to talk about it. I'm a, a different order or I'm going to talk about different ideas. It's okay. Right now, this is just a brainstorming activity. I want you to think um, in terms of specific examples, but they're possibilities, right? These are, these are possibilities. Right now, I want you guys to be thinking specific aspects of your performance. I want you to be thinking, instead of saying keywords, tell, tell us what those keywords are. Uh, examples of, to make it easy, all right? So, for example, uh, Violeta, what examples, specific examples could you include, right? Avoid the word important information. Tell us what the important information is. Some pictures of what? Right? Images of what? What kind of images? What? Be specific. Knowing the origin of the tradition. Good, Alonso. What tradition are you thinking about? Go ahead and list it out. Again, if you change your mind, you want to talk about something else, that's fine. This is not a commitment. This is just a... a, a of, a brainstorming activity for us to begin thinking about our topic. Leo, some mind maps, okay? So you're going to include mind maps in your performance? And if so, what kind of mind map? Right? Is it going to be a Venn diagram showing two elements, three elements, four elements? Is it going to be a problem solution type of mind map? Is it going to be a flow charting type of mind map and again make sure that you're thinking about including this in your performance if that's what you're referring to if you're talking about a mind map just in the planning i would rather you focus more on the final product what will that final product what should it include what's going to be a good performance what's going to be a good video both visually, textually. Again, guys, images. What kind of images? So, Alexia, maybe you can mention what kind, what, what celebrity have you chosen? Or what types of celebrities are you going to include or could you include in your video? I like, uh, Alexia, how you, you have here reasons and, uh, yeah, reasons or ways that they're famous. If you can provide an example, that would be great. Try to include some examples here in this list. With food and culture, if you're thinking about a recipe, right, remember that this is going to be all within a context of a cooking show. So a cooking show. Let's see if we can find YouTube cooking show. Okay, see if we can find a quick example. Vegetables are such an asset. All right, Gordon Ramsay, he's a famous guy. He has his own cooking show. This is 20 minutes. All right, so you might get some ideas at looking at some examples in YouTube on some popular cooking shows. Now, there are going to be some similarities because, and some differences. Similarities, all of us are going to do a cooking show, but we're also going to be talking about other aspects, right? Some famous people, right? Um, 
and what's some what's popular right which kind of relates to culture but you can get some ideas visually about how to create good videos and i would just go on youtube and find some get some examples get inspired by certain aspects of different examples of different cooking shows you bring that into your own design your own creativity when you're thinking about your own cooking show okay everyone's going to do a cooking show everyone's going to be using a sway in some way all right so the cooking show itself you could just have you know one card the sway is going to be just where we're going to upload the cooking show all right, so you don't need to have a lot of cards. It's just where we're going to upload the cooking show. So it can be very simple. It can be a very simple sway. The main thing is the actual video, the cooking show itself. Okay, let's look at... I've got about five more minutes. I really want to uh, look at all of your examples here to help guide you guys to think specifically about aspects of your own performance that you can include in your own cooking show. All right, so let's look at Liz. She's mentioned Marilyn Monroe. So right off the bat, this is a good example because she's specific. So she is choosing, she's thinking about Marilyn Monroe when talking about someone famous. Let me give you an example of how Liz, uh, let's say, Liz, are you, can you activate your microphone? Yep. All that right. Happened. So, all right. So your team, which team are you in? I'm in team eight. Team eight. All right. So what you could do, Liz, let's say, and this is just as an example, you're okay. going to talk, you could talk about Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe talk about her life, why she's famous, obviously style could be part of your discussion. But let's say that you found out what Marilyn Monroe liked to eat. That could be brought in to one of your teammates' discussions about which recipe to discuss. Like her favorite food or something like that? Exactly. And anything that you guys can find about how it's prepared, how she liked it, or anything culturally. Maybe it has something to do with American culture. Maybe it's a, a Mexican dish that has something related to Mexican culture. So, you know, that could be a decision that your classmate could make, but it relates, it ties back into Marilyn Monroe. Okay. All right, so the idea is to try to find ways to tie each of your three uh, sections into one type of video. So your cooking show could be all about Marilyn Monroe and style, culture, traditions, food, and bring it all together into, in this example, related to this one person, Marilyn Monroe. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. And this is just an example, but as you, right now, as we're listing all of these, right, tomorrow we're going to continue working in our teams. You guys can talk about what you thought about today and make any decisions or change any of your, your ideas about how to bring that together. But you want to tie it in together. We don't want three sections that are completely different that don't link or relate to each other, right? We want to try to tie it together into uh, a common thread. All right, great. Thank you, uh, Liz. You're welcome, teacher. Got a couple of more minutes, guys. Go ahead and keep uh, adding to this list. I'm looking. I really would like everyone to put something down. Again, we're just brainstorming. Tomorrow, we're going to work with our teams. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk about what you uploaded here. If you don't upload anything here, 
tomorrow it's uh, it's going to be you're not going to get as much out of tomorrow's discussion. It's going to be really helpful if you can put something down here to receive feedback from me first as to how specific your eyes are, ideas are going to be. And you can always come back to this list tomorrow or later this week to change any of this information here. But it's very important. This list is going to be really important because I'm going to use this list to evaluate your performances. All right? So we need to work together in this list to get some good, specific aspects of your performance understood that you and both both you and I understand what a good performance is going to be for your particular video, for your particular cooking show. All right, guys, it's 940. Looks like 27 of you so far have responded. Those of you who have not, I would ask that you add your information to this list before tomorrow's class. Tomorrow, we're going to work in our teams, the whole class, and we're going to begin thinking about putting together a cooking show, putting together a cooking show based on information that you have in this list, right? And I'm going to continue offering feedback both outside of class and in class that relates to this list, all right? So if, you're ch if you come up with some more ideas later today, come back to this list and add or change whatever you need to. Tomorrow in class, when you're working in your teams, if you need to come back to this list and make changes, I would ask that you do this. I'm going to continue referring to this list all week, including the final performance on Friday. Our performance task is going to be due this Friday. I'm going to ask everyone or expect everyone to speak about five minutes total. Okay, so if you have three members of your team, your video is going to be approximately... 15 minutes. You have four people, about 20 minutes. Go on YouTube, find some examples of some good cooking shows to get some ideas, right? Um, and get some ideas about visually how they present their ideas. Pay attention to how they organize their ideas throughout the cooking show. Right? You don't have to do exactly what you see online, but get some ideas. You can get some ideas about how they present certain dishes. Um, you know, the, the cooking show might just relate to the food itself, but a lot of good cooking shows will talk about cultural aspects about the food. So you might get some information and some ideas about how you can do that. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there, guys. Again, please complete this list if you haven't already for, uh, for, for tomorrow, before tomorrow's class. And we'll continue working in our performances uh, in our teams tomorrow and as we get together. And uh, I'll also probably be trying to talk individually with each team uh, as well tomorrow as we put our, some ideas together. All right, guys, any questions about... The um, anything that we've talked about here today? No teacher. No teacher. No teacher. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. I hope you guys have a good uh, day with the rest of your classes, and we'll we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Teacher, teacher, I have one question. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Uh, do we have to make all the the topics have something in common, or? Um, I would like. It's not necessary that all the topics link, but the the video should link the. It should link, like for example, fashion and uh, maybe holidays and traditions and food.
right? So do try to link the three topics together in certain in a certain way, right? Um, the idea is to create one common video that is in the form of a cooking show, but that links those three ideas. Okay. Thanks, teacher. Okay, you're welcome.